Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a muggy, unpleasant Florida Wednesday. It's really back. You know, the summer's on the way. We really did have a couple of weeks of, eh, you know, I'll call it unusually cool mornings, but they are gone. The insects are out, the humidity is in the air, the sweat's trickling off. Uh, even at this early hour, it's just... It's too much, and it just renews my wish of moving to Alaska and selling snowmobiles to people and being cold and happy all the time. Uh, even the overcast weather and the storms, they've helped a little bit, but uh, you just know what's coming, and it just makes the world horrible. Uh, speaking of the world being horrible, you know, we've still got this virus thing going on. I, I went out yesterday. I had to go to the bank, of all things. I had to make an appointment. They acted like they were doing me a favor. I have to say that there is something about the way things have been going have moved everything away from customer service and given these water cooler Nazis a real sense of power. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Even the little checkout girl at Trader Joe's yesterday, uh, you could see her policing the yellow line, making people stand behind and some poor woman made the mistake of coming up to the counter and the little girl just ate her face off. It was horrible. And uh, it's just changed the way things are. It's very, very strange and very unappealing. And, uh, I, you know, I, people might say, oh, that makes you political. Well, I don't think it does. I mean, I really don't have politics in the. It's just this is an America that I do not recognize. Uh, you know, wearing a mask into the bank, they erected some sort of a big sneeze shield between me and the clerk behind, and we're just looking at each other from six feet away and thinking, what the hell are we doing here? It's absolutely insane. So in that, thank God, I've got this, and this is a 2011 Cadillac CTS V Coupe. Oh, God, this is an elixir for my soul. One of the reasons being, to me, uh, this is much more about what America is. And, and I know, yeah, you know, what, without all the Rocky IV stuff, I mean, it really is. I mean, this was, when it came out, the ultimate Cadillac, the most powerful Cadillac that had ever been made. And uh, is just, look at the flies. Oh, God, oh, they're back. Look at this stupid thing. God, I hate them. Uh, anyway, uh, this was an incredible... There's three flies on the hood, and I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <sighs> okay, we'll get past that. But anyway, to me, this was the ultimate Cadillac, and uh, it still is, you know, it maintains a very high position in my head about what a car should be. Uh, obviously, I love Cadillacs. I always have. I mean, I think it's just an incredible brand. Obviously, like most of GM, they lost their way for many, many years and started building stuff that nobody really wanted. And uh, occasionally, they would come out with this idea that they were going to compete with the European makers, you know, because at a certain point in time, there was a time when the luxury buyers in the United States all bought Cadillacs. I mean, it's what they bought. Uh, there was this parade of cars from General Motors. As you went through life and started earning more money, you started going up the brands. When you were young, you might buy a Pontiac. Uh, that would morph into an Oldsmobile, which would morph into a Buick. And then finally, when you had made it, you would be in a Cadillac. Well, uh, that had been over for decades. It just isn't something that went on anymore. And uh, that was a shame. And so Cadillac saw that happening, even in their worst times, and came up with an idea to start competing with the Europeans, who had really, look at this, we got more flies, we got little things the detailer forgot. Uh, anyway, they started to, to build cars that might compete with the Europeans. You might remember some of them. The Cimarron. What a piece of shit. <laughs> really horrible, horrible car based on the Chevy Cavalier. Uh, they built, um, what, and later on the Cetera, which wasn't a bad car. That was based on an Opal. Uh, but it really didn't work. Uh, but the dream continued. And enter, finally, Cadillac's art and science design theme, which came out Oh, I don't know, in the late 1990s, very late, with show cars and concept cars. And then they started putting them into practice. Uh, out came the CTS, out came the uh, XLR, and uh, things started to change at Cadillac until finally, I think, this car. You know, there was the original CTS-V. I, I want to say it was 04 to 
2010, which was a pretty amazing car. Used the LS motor out of the Chevy Corvette, uh, put out about 400 horsepower, uh, ran very well on the Nuremberg ring, and was a pretty neat piece. But until these cars, the 11s, came out, the, the second gen CTSV, uh, Cadillac didn't really get it right and I think they did with this car. They finally took it to the German makers in a way uh, that put America back on the map and it wasn't just oh god you know congratulations for trying. Uh, it was wow they really did it and uh, we'll get into why as we go. And uh, in fact I'm gonna skip the trunk for the moment and get right under the hood because that is the most important part of this car. Now this uses the Sigma platform. Look at the flies. Look at the freaking flies. This uses the Sigma rear drive platform, which was exclusive to Cadillac at the time. I believe it still is. Well, actually, it's got to the Omega platform replaced it. Uh, but anyway, it's a front, a double wishbone, rear link suspension. Uh, in this coupe version, it's a little bit wider and shorter than on the sedans and the wagons. And it is a beautifully balanced chassis. And to complement that, in this car, they put in this MSA uh, V8. This thing is bad to the bone. This is, um, what the hell is it, 6.2 liters, all aluminum. Uh, it is that push rod engine. So it uses this archaic technology where it doesn't have big overhead cams. It uses a cam in the center. And uh, GM, against all odds, decided to develop the LS motor like that. And thank God they did, because it preserved what was unique uh, about American cars, the small block Chevy thing, uh, and uh, carried it into the future in a nice, compact, incredibly reliable platform that could be taken to all sorts of heights as it was in this one. So uh, this is essentially a Z06 motor. You're talking about an Eaton style screw type supercharger running down the middle. Uh, again, aluminum block and heads, high compression, VVT technology, 556 brake horsepower, 556 in a Cadillac uh, with 551 pound feet of torque. It is a monster engine under the hood and it is all too willing to do whatever it is that you ask for it. It never feels stressed in this car. It's just so happy to provide oodles and oodles of torque. Uh, yeah, this is kind of weird. This is the second car we've got in in a while that was signed by someone famous. Uh, the first one was a Corvette Z06 a while back. Uh, this is signed by Jimmy O'Connell, um, who is uh, very sort of, I won't call him famous because these guys never really are when they're in this Eurocentric racing series, but he is one of the most storied and exceptional uh, race car drivers of, uh, you know, recent memory. He's one of the most winningest guys at Sebring, at Le Mans, uh, very, very skilled cat. And in 2012 and 13, he brought Cadillac and the CTSV to two GT World Champions, uh, championships, uh, manufacturers' championships, forgive me, which is incredible. I mean, they're out there against the Corvettes, against the Porsches, against all of the European stuff, and Cadillac finally took it to them and uh, did very, very well. Thank God. Nice to see. Uh, but anyway, pretty neat stuff under the hood of this thing and uh, very well preserved. See the supercharged badge on the side. Uh, big bracing there. Oh God, it's just awesome. The big power bulge in the center of the hood. Very cool. The angry, sharp, angular lines of that art and science approach really actually uh, work on this CTS. The stacked headlights with uh, the bi-xenons, the incredible mesh grill, and then right in the center, the uh, Cadillac wreaths and crests with the ducks on them that we talked about, and uh, good old Antoine de la Mothe de Cadillac, or whatever the hell his name was, uh, the guy that founded Detroit and who Cadillac is named for, a very wonderful historical grifter who, you know, conned his way into, he, he uh, what did he do? He it talked some lovely noble woman into marrying him uh, by faking everything and came up with this phony crest with ducks on it that became the Cadillac crown. Oh, I don't know, somebody's going to argue, it doesn't matter. Anyway, interesting cat, uh, old Antoine. Uh, but look at the lines of this thing. So sharp, angular, big flares on the fenders, uh, big 19-inch uh, alloy wheels, 15-inch Brembo brakes with six pistons up front, four in the back. They're like manhole covers behind the wheels. Uh, they use a dual aluminum metal setup, which uh, resists 
fade and also is inexpensive, which is key to owning a car like this. It's nice that the maintenance isn't insane. And that's part of what are keeping uh, this car's values up is uh, they don't fall apart. I mean, you get a BMW M3, which you know is very similar, very competitive car. And by the way, anybody in a 1970, you go back in time, what, 40 years ago, and say, hey, you know, the Eldorado you just bought uh, 40 years from now is going to be competing with the great grandchild of the BMW 2002. They didn't look like you were from the moon, but uh, anyway, there it is. That's what you got. Uh, but it brings this car down to a stop in no time. Incredible uh, braking system on this thing. The suspension, incredible. Look at the exhaust, the twin four-inch round pipes coming out the back. It looks like the exhaust of an F14. I mean, incredible. Uh, very high rear end, big butt, giant rump on it. Uh, I like it. A lot of people say it's too much. I don't care. I think it's fantastic. Love that angular uh, rear window. Love the sloped rear glass. Uh, even like this um, uh, big uh, third brake light spoiler thing, which I think works quite well. And uh, just reminiscent of Cadillac tail fins on those, uh, on those rear tail lights. So uh, when the coupe came out in 2011, it kind of took everyone by storm. The automotive press loved it. And why wouldn't they? I mean, what an amazing amazing piece. <laughs> I know I'm so negative on cars, but I just can't be on this one. I absolutely love it. A shark fin antenna up there. Let's get in the trunk. So very useful trunk in this thing. I mean, you could say that it's a Z06 Corvette for more elegant people. And uh, yeah, fair enough. If that's what you want to say, that's good enough. Uh, you can see you got pretty good room back here. Uh, if you do use it as a two-seater, which I presume a lot of people will, uh, you could just fold those rear seats forward. Then you can fit a set of big golf clubs in there, the Rodney Dangerfield ones. Uh, otherwise, your toddlers and babies are going to be pretty chipper back there. They got a pretty big amount of space. Looks like our net is gone. I don't know where the hell the infant retainment net is. It could be under here. And it is. There it is with the uh, tire inflator. So uh, if you want, there's the net you can deploy to keep your uh, infants and toddlers intact in the trunk. Uh, you know, they can paw at it and stuff, but they're really not getting out of there. So they'll be safe back there until you retrieve them. And uh, that's a pretty useful trunk for what is truly a two-seat uh, sports car in four-seat GT form. Okay, inside, Cadillac did a beautiful job with the interior. This one has the uh, rather expensive Recaro seat package. Some people claim they're a bit hard and stiff, but, you know, I've never met a Recaro I didn't like, and uh, I think that holds true for these. Uh, in this particular color combination, I think it's quite European-looking. You've got all these, you know, you've got your fake carbon fiber here, but you've got nice swoops of leather, and, uh, you know, the fit and finish on the car is much better than historical. Cadillac. And here's the most fantastic thing about this one. Three pedals. Three pedals in a 556 horsepower Cadillac coupe. <sighs> What's not to like? Uh, but anyway, the fit and finish, lovely. The quality of everything, quite nice. And I think it very much holds its own against the European counterparts. Uh, if I get back here, let's see if I can do that. It's hard one hand. Let me go to the other side. They give you this pinch thing, which, you know, I'm not a giant fan of, but it is very trick, and it does do away with the need to have shaved, uh, or sorry, door handles, so they look shaved like on an old hot rod or something. Uh, anyway, you've got rear seats. Uh, they're pretty comfortable, not too terrible. Uh, your Canadians aren't going to be jumping for joy back there. Their heads might even hit the rear glass if they're tall. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a pretty comfy place to be. And quite frankly, the people who buy this car aren't going to be really concerned with their backseat passengers. I sure as hell wouldn't be. Right, let's hop in. Oh, God, away from the flies. All right, get my seat up a little bit. It has a whole keyless system, so the key just stays in your pocket. Uh, let's fire this thing on. The battery feels a little weak. That's because our retarded detailer was running it in the bay yesterday with the radio on and the doors open, so it needs a drive to get itself together. Get your seatbelt on. You know, it's just amazing to sit in this thing. 
<clears throat> with this very sporty instrument cluster, 200 mile per hour speedometer. Uh, you've got a full set of gauges, including a boost gauge down here. And to know that you're in a Cadillac, what is essentially in the El Dorado is just amazing. I mean, you can just feel that this is not uh, the Cadillac <laughs> your grandfather drove. Uh, you've got an Alcantara steering wheel right out of a race car. Nice little multifunction stuff on it. It's got a power tilt and column. Uh, let's see, we can go through the different uh, things. There's our oil life. Uh, you can change your units. That's probably what our transitioning mechanic over at the other place is doing. Uh, tire pressure, battery volts, compass, uh, oil pressure. You get all the gauges. Here's a, what is this? Looks like a lateral G meter. So I'm going to leave it on that. Can tell how many G's we're pulling in a corner. Could be acceleration as well. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it on that. Uh, you know, all this stuff controls this. What do we got here? The turn this off for a minute. Oh, why this seems so dim. Let's fix that. Config. Display. Brightness. Yeah, look at this. All the way. That's probably something our nitwit detailer did. And we've got Detroit on the... <laughs> got Detroit on the nav map. I have no idea why. Let's go back to, there we go, now we're in the right spot. But anyway, you've got this big pop-up screen, which is cool. And I'll show you something else that's neat. When you go into reverse, this thing pops up in a hurry. Look at that. With the uh, rear camera. Very, very cool. You also get the backup beepers. Uh, just again, neat stuff. I do like the technology in this car. Probably not enough to keep the snowflakes happy. You know, they won't have your TikTok videos and stuff. Uh, but it's more than enough to keep me going. Uh, what do we have? 80s on 8. We got Christopher Cross. Oh, now we got Don Henley, Boys of Summer. I think that was a song about a really horrible horror, but uh, I'm sure she was nice in her own way. Uh, anyway, so good infotainment on this thing. You got your satellite, you got your Bluetooth, you got all your crap that you're going to need. Uh, you got the prerequisite analog clock because you're in a luxury car and they need to let you know that. Uh, you got faux leather stitched around the whole dashboard to match the faux carbon fiber. You got this rather nice piano black trim. Uh, Cadillac resisted the urge to make it too plastic fantastic. The material the quality all feels nice, like the direct access that goes with the touch screen, and uh, no complaints at all about the infotainment. You also have dual side climate control. We've got some uh, ball breezer seats here, so uh, they'll blow cool air up through that Alcantara stuff. Uh, right onto your rump and uh, make you happy. Uh, more piano black, little place uh, cup holder here, which is, you know, again, cheap GM stuff, but it's never going to break like the over-engineered crap on the Mercedes. Uh, you get in here, you got a lovely little place for a compact 9mm, no issues. A little bit deeper, you might even fit, now. you're not fitting anything good in there. Uh, so probably just one handgun in the center console, which should be enough. Then you've got your auxiliaries at 12 volts. Uh, up here you've got a self-dimming mirror with OnStar, home link, that sort of thing. Uh, you got a big power sunroof to run that with a shade that really cuts it off, which is nice. <clears throat> and uh, everything working just absolutely lovely, I think. Let's see how we do that. What, it just vents? It doesn't go back? Yeah, I guess that's true, like in the BMW, so that's all you can do is just vent it. Uh, anyway, what else do we have here? We're going to close that shade. Very nice. And uh, let's do the important thing and go for a spin. So to see this gearbox in a Cadillac, uh, I understand there were a lot of complaints about the automatic transmissions these things had. Uh, people didn't always love them, uh, but uh, they were pretty nice and docile and sporty enough. But I think if I'm going to own one of these things, I definitely want it with the manual gearbox, you know, just to say my Cadillac has a stick. Right, let's go for a spin. Looks like we're heating up nicely. You can just feel a solidity to these cars that reminds me of the BMW M5, uh, the Mercedes E63. Cadillac really, really did their homework on this one and got it exactly right. And 
fact, when Road and Track tested the, they tested this against the Audi uh, S8, against the uh, BMW M5, and uh, they gave this thing incredible. But the one German guy said this was the most stable car, uh, you know, at 175 miles an hour. They did revoke his German citizenship for saying that, but uh, I'm sure it's true. Alright, let's see. We gotta find a way to turn off all our traction controls and stuff. I can't remember where it is on this car. Let's see if we can't find that. Before anyone comes up the back. Where the hell do you do that? Alright, here's traction control. Alright, that's off. What else do we have? I want to get it in the right. There's mode. Well, I'm just gonna. Alright, the hell with it. Uh, this does use that magneto rheological suspension from Delphi, uh, which uh, has become so good and appreciated. Audi and Ferrari are now using it, uh, which uh, just tells you how fantastic it is. It uses a ferrofluid uh, that the computer can make uh, more thick or thin, depending on needs, and that will adjust the dampening of the shocks. And what it does is just keep the car incredibly well planted. Let's see how this feels. Shit. <laughs> There's a rev limiter. All right, so what you've got there is 556 horsepower of Cadillac. Insanity. Insanity. I mean, if that's not an America fuck yeah moment, I don't know what is. That pushrod V8 with minimal thought. I mean, it's not at all remotely trouble. Oh, let's just do that again. It's so hard to shift. All right, well, anyway, you get the point. This thing is a friggin' monster, an absolute monster. Uh, I mean, it just, I don't, I mean, you could have done that in fourth gear and it would have snapped your head back. This thing will break the tires loose at 90. It is an incredible machine absolutely incredible machine and that has always been the thing that was lacking in these GM take it to the Europeans uh, you know crap that they would build that we were supposed to pretend was as good as the BMWs and really wasn't in this case it is it is they really stuck it to them they stuck it to Corvette while they were at it all right, you know, I really should have had a GoPro in here for this one. Trying to shift cross-handed while holding the camera just doesn't work very well. No roosters today, thank God. I'll try to stick to your side of the lane, retard. Uh, anyway, um, there it is. So an absolutely insane car, incredibly fun to drive, uh, incredibly well handling, uh, just an amazing, amazing piece in every way. And thank God, it's exactly what I need right now in these bizarre and troubled times of, uh, of uh, weird, you know, everyone wearing masks and hiding at home from a virus. It's exactly what I needed. <clears throat> the dots is going to be sitting for a few days. Uh, so there it is. This is a 2011 Cadillac CTSV Coupe. Incredible, incredible machine. Uh, tight as a drum. Incredible to drive. Just an absolute joy. Uh, if you have an interest in this one, it is for sale on our lot. You can give Marty a call. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, you're going to have trouble getting it in the next few days. You're going to have to pry it from my cold, dead fingers. I'll try not to burn the rear tires off it, but uh, no promises at all. Uh, uh, this thing does donuts faster than uh, Krispy Kreme. So uh, thank you very much for having a look. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to come up with something fun soon to do. Take care.